Linda, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, just checking, make sure. All right, uh, well, I'm saying welcome back again, or welcome again. And um, this is our Wednesday afternoon intermediate class. And as always, for those of you that have not seen before today, hello. And those of you I've seen already today, hello again. So, in getting started, let me give you my wild word for today. My wild word for today is the word balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E. And um, I chose that word because I recognize um, it's important to balance the things in our lives because there's a lot going on. And I also, I'm trying to get into meditation and I find that um, I'm not really good at it, but I'm starting to practice that. And by doing so, I mean, you know, when they talk about how closing your eyes and kind of closing your mind and putting yourself in this state where there's nothing around you. It is just amazing, even for that short period of time, what it does because it kind of blocks everything out. But at the same time, I also recognize that when you're in this quiet zone, you putting your mind in a space where you can block out things. But even in your consciousness, you still need to be able to balance things it, within you so that it allows you to have peace and contentment, even though you actively participating in all that's happening around you. So that's the reason I chose the word balance. And one of the um, definitions that I pulled, you know, always find definitions that it what I wanted to say. It described balance as an even distribution. So while you got good things going on, bad things going on, it's important to try to keep yourself centered so you don't let all the weight of something negative that's going on to pull you so far in that direction that it's hard to get back to the center of something. So, you know, that is why I want to focus on trying to balance what's coming within me all the time. And of course, I think I shared with you all in the past, I'm controlling um, the news. Um, what I watch on TV, uh, a lot of things to help keep me balanced because I finally recognize if I'm watching something um, before I go to bed, and which is another reason I turned away from the news, I found that I did not have a good night's sleep because all of these things are going through my mind. And that's the key thing in trying to meditate is that you want to learn how to zone yourself so that you can block some of the things that are coming through. And uh, on that note, I think I shared with the morning class, sometimes you'll find that you have to block and balance friends, family, we love them, but you know, people are bringing all their points of view and they're not necessarily fit, uh, filtering when they bring it to you. So those are things that you have to look at, but I just want to focus on the overall effect of being balanced. Any there thoughts, was, comments? Yes, there was a, and uh, I, uh, uh, Mr. Matt message on Sunday was something he said, and it was, and I kind of wrote it down, miss me with that. Meaning when you're coming with something negative, right. something that gossip, whatever, Miss me with that. Oh, I, like that. I mean, I did. I wrote it down so I could remember it because mm -hmm. you know, you I can say, you can miss me with that. That's not right. something that I need to hear or something I need to know. Just go keep skip that and go to something else. I like that. Is that from Yeah, very uh -huh. good. I like Mr. it too. Yeah, miss me with that. I'm writing that down. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I had to write that one down so that I could remember that one. Just you know. Because you're right, with, with TV and everything going on, there's a lot of negativity and some stuff you just don't want to hear and some stuff you just don't need to hear. Exactly. Because we still have to guard our ears. Mm -hmm. I agree. I have um, several pages of things on my um, 
computer that came from Bishop Bronner. Like when I would come to church, you know, and mm -hmm. he'd make a comment about something, whatever, I would jot it down. And finally one day, um, I started typing them up and I have them on the sheet. I'll add this to his page. But there's, he has always said something that's unique that I find that is like, wow, that's really, really powerful statement. But I do like that. So miss me with that. That sounds like the child of a book. <laughs> oh, no. that, that could be. But I'm also thinking about it when you have someone that's bringing you something with this news or whatever, like you say, that you don't want to hear like what's on Twitter that I ought not to be participating in because I don't want to read all of that garbage. Miss me with that. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other comments or thoughts before we move on? Okay. Um, just doing our, my public service announcement, reminder of October 30th, the, 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 the October celebration and uh, our Halloween celebration which will be from 10 to 11.30. Um, even if you opt not to participate by decorating a pumpkin or something like that for an entry, I'm, I'm asking you to think about just joining in because it's a lot of fun. They play games. Um, there's so much going on, but always for me is trying to encourage people to participate. Um, re whether you're at the facility or not, in my mind, we're still at the facilities in a lot of ways. So uh, a lot of effort goes into getting these things together and we're getting better and better all the time at using um, Zoom for so many things. So just wanna make you aware that that's still on and you have the option of dressing in a costume, wearing a mask, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I will say that. So if you've, since I'm one of the judges for the pumpkin thing contest, but if you wear a mask or do something different, you might want to think about, not that I'm judging you, because I'll probably guess who you are, <laughs> but, it, you know, being around people for a long time, you just start to go, oh, that's this person, that's whatever, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so think about it, okay? Okay. And next one, um, did everybody receive the current virtual schedule? I think it has an end date of 11-11. I think that's, that's the end date. Did you get your schedules? Yeah, I think you sent that Monday. Yes, yes. Oh, I may have. I'm not sure. Okay, well, if you find it, you don't have this shipment an email and I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, I you. try to stay uh keep the current one because oftentimes they might add another seminar or they found someone else that resents something that's uniquely different. And I think I did make you all aware about the Medicare Tuesdays that's coming up October 27th and what is the 11th or something. Um, so if you have anything pertaining to Medicare that you may uh, want to ask the question about, uh, feel free to send your question in early then to Kelly so that she can get it over to Miss Queen, um, Miss Jordan. Yes, November 10th and October 27th, just in case. I think on the, um, uh, from our class, nutrition class today, I okay. think they said on Friday, they're having eye health. There's going to be an ophthalmologist that's going, I think it's going to be on the 11 o'clock, the one for the nutrition. Um, this coming Friday. Uh huh. There's third. going to be uh huh. There's going to be a physician on there talking about your eye health. I can't remember if I read something about that or not. I would have to check to see if it's on that schedule. I That's Kim's class. Right. They should have it on that the current schedule. Okay. And you said it's eleven o'clock. I think he, yeah, because her class is eleven o'clock. So I oh, believe yeah. it's eleven. Okay. I won't make that. I forgot. I've got class on Friday. But I can always go back and look at the video. That's the neat part about being able to record the session and everything. Okay, thank you for that information, Gwen. And um, as far as my announcement, I think that's all that I have at this point, or at least that's all I can remember. I got a balance in mind. <laughs> all right, so onward.
So what I'm going to do next is show and tell, and then I'll discuss some of the things that I wanted to share with you for this session. Um, so are we ready? Anything else? Any other comments? We're good? I keep asking. Don't want to overlook anyone, because I know you all are rare to share <laughs> information with me. I can tell. <laughs> and this was my first piece that came in and um, fr from Miss Julia, who is absolutely blowing my mind. And so this yeah, is yeah. what she, she submitted. Okay, yeah. Julia. All right. It's really pretty. That's neat. That's not an art, Julia. You want to yes. tell us about it, Julia? Yeah, it's the tubular netting. And it's... um like a bangle bracelet, I guess, it's the tubular netting with 11 seat beads. And I guess those uh, other beads are four or six it millimeters. like about One six of, millimeters. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, look about six. Yeah. yeah. So you just slide that over your wrist? Yes, it rolls okay. down. I actually made it a little bit big for me, but yeah, you can, can just slide it on. Okay. Now, I know that Julia has an extremely small wrist. One of the things is with things like this, you know, you can get, um, what's that stretchy thread? There's a stretchy type thread. Oh, Sanuki? Mm. Yeah, and I use, you know what, and I use the glossomer. That's, that's okay, glossomer. Yeah, I use glossomer. But glossomer oh, is yeah. a glossomer, G-L-O-S-S-M-E-R, I think is how you spell it. And what was the one you mentioned, Ellen? Those all Sanuki. Oh, okay. I haven't used that one. Because I, I would normally find a glossomer was, um, I think I found like in Hobby Lobby and Michael's probably has it. But what it is, it is a weaving thread, but it has a stretchiness to it, which will allow you, <coughs> excuse me, if you're making something that requires some expansion to it, it works mm -hmm. real well. Now, I know you won't have a problem doing uh, sliding pieces on but I like having something like that because that stretch is there in the event that you need it or something depending upon you know some people putting their hand through can be uh, yeah. somewhat awkward but that's gorgeous the colors are gorgeous yes, you. Indeed. yeah how long did it take you to make it you know it took me uh several days, but you know, I just do a couple of hours here and there. Mm. Kind of, sort of. I, yes. I haven't learned to finish anything in one sitting yet. <laughs> well, something like this, I wouldn't do it. And no matter, I always say, don't push yourself on something. Um, it's amazing to me how most crafters, unless you're doing a show or something, they have these time limits they put on themselves. And I, I don't understand why. I really don't. But you know, that's a personal thing, but you don't have to, really. And the, the thing about it is, for me, the worst thing of it is it's starting something, and then I get to a certain point, and I get bored with that, and I go start yeah. something else. And then it might be six months before I go back to the other thing, because it's just that I'm not feeling it. And when you're mm -hmm. not, it's hard to, you know, to really make it work and sometimes I feel if you try to make it work like that then you mess it up because you're not following I just feel when it's when it's right you're going to continue with it and if you start having those moments uh whatever it's just not not where it needs to be in your mind or in your universe <coughs> okay real nice Julie. Really it nice. is very nice yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then we have Miss Nancy. I showed this this morning, but this was, and you want to talk about this, Nancy? Ooh. This is a peyote uh, nice. bracelet. Uh, in the middle, I ran out the light colored cube beads. Here. And on the end uh, is the brick stitch. I use some clothes here. Pretty. That's it. I like the design. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. 
So all the beats are are the cube cubes. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I use QBs a lot because they stack really nice if you uh -huh. got, I say, the right ones. Because now I find that everybody else, people are throwing these little mix in cuts that aren't equal, and you'll end up with a little jagged edge sticking up on one. And of course, when you pull them together, then you've got the space in that center. And that is one of the, the recent or my annoyance with beads is that they don't always, even though they say they're selling quality beads, you'll find that you may have oh, some okay. miscuts in there. That's what the color is supposed to be about. But then when you get a miscut like that, it's all, if you're doing a necklace, something like that simplicity necklace, this was just laid out differently. It doesn't matter because you got a lot of stuff all kind of chunk up together and mm -hmm. you can get away with it. Or if I have just a few that's got sharp edges on, I'll use a file to take that, you know, the corners off. Mm. So things like that make a difference. So this is the other part of Miss Nancy, just displayed different. Okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't know which was uh, like sewed up better, the black or the other color. What did you say, Nancy? I didn't know which would show up better, the black background or uh, the other <coughs> Oh, you mean as far as displaying? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I do is, um, and I'll just pull this up for a minute here just to show you. Oftentimes when I'm taking a picture, this is just a white piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 paper. Because if I, I didn't, um, if I want to lighten the background, it's easy to do it if it's white. Um, so that's something to think about. Sometimes, you know, when, you, when you're adding things to something. But what happens is when we do the bus, if you notice that it's so easy to see all of the little specks in it, yeah, yeah. it's really, really, really important to keep one of those lint rollers. I always clean my bus off because just from sitting, they'll get mm -hmm. dust on them. And you will be surprised at how that dust, when it's magnified, it looks like these mm -hmm. big snowflake drops all over everything. Right. You know? So I always clean the bus. Um, just, you know, just to prep. But once again, like something like this, because it's on that white background, it's easy for me to go in and edit it and change the filter on it, and it'll show up in a, in mm -hmm. a different way, just to give you an idea. So I'll, I'll snap a picture or something like that. Mm -hmm. But get that dust off your bus, ladies. <laughs> now, I'll stop this for a moment and I'll go back. Okay. Some information for you. All right. I got, and I'll bear with me, I got this this morning um, from one of my other classes, Sandra. And what she wanted to make me aware so I could share is the October 2020 issue of Beating Button Magazine will be the last because the publisher, Calvax, is ending publication due to declining sales. They will continue for the, at the moment to, with the Beadwork Magazine, remember you had Beating Button and you uh -huh. had Beadwork. So they will continue at this time with beadwork, don't know how long, but they have also canceled and in the um, bead and button show that's done every year out of Milwaukee, that's over and done. So just for your information. And I um, responded to her, of course, thanking her for sharing the information, but what's key is, I call this one of the hidden um, impact of COVID. You know, things that we stay in mainstream and look at all the things that's being impacted by COVID. But this is one of them. And it would be something I never, when you think about all the bead shows we would go to, you know, at this time of year, I mean, I would be with Frank Cox. I would be here and there with all of these things. But this pandemic in the economy has had a major impact because that show out in Milwaukee, it brought instructors in even from overseas to teach classes and are you talking about thousands and thousands of participants that would attend those shows 
So um, I was really sorry, or I am really sorry to hear this. What I plan to do, hopefully I can find one this afternoon when we finish class, I want to order the October issue of Beat and Button so that I will have that as a final edition of it. But just want to pass that on to you. Okay. And I've not had the opportunity yet to check this, but um, what I have been told is, I think most of you are aware that Fusion Beat closed down. Oh, they're on Amazon now. Exactly. Yeah, Leona shared that with us in Friday's class. So if you're used to ordering from, and I always love Fusion. I really did, and I ordered a lot of stuff from them. But now, did you get a notice from them? Yes. Yeah, because she did also. Of course, I haven't gotten a notice from them, and I order a lot of stuff from Fusion. But anyway, Leona made us aware of this. So that's another thing. So if you're used to ordering um, uh, beads or anything from Fusion Beads, you can now go through Amazon for them. All right. Mm, I just can't handle you. Now, in the process of us with class, if you are a person that really is into the two whole bees, this is a book that um, Aretha told us about. And I ordered this book because I have Virginia Henson's, uh, Jensen, I'm sorry, first book about bee with two whole bees. But this is a newer one. And I, I just want to mention this. It has some fantastic patterns in here. And the first thing, of course, I want to do is I love these earrings right here. The only thing is, um, and I don't know if this, it looks like a kidney-shaped bean that bean is here. I need to order some of these. But I do want to make these earrings. But it has fantastic patterns. That's who cool, again? Uh, the, book is the, the book is Virginia Jensen. She's the uh, writer for the book. And Virginia it's who? Jensen, J as in John, E-N-S-E-N. -E okay. And um, I noticed that a lot of her um, patterns reflect this kidney-shaped bead that's in here. So I need to order some of those because I, I don't have any of them. But because I want to book, it's called Two Whole Bead Stitching. And the other thing that I like are these dangle earrings. But as I oh, said, yeah. they have these, um, the, the, it's like a three-hole bar as a bead, which I don't have. And I'm not using any of those. So I do plan to order like the kidney-shaped ones. And I want to check this, but I just think they're beautiful. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely patterns. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's new on the horizon. Let's see what else I have for you. Have that. And then the other thing, do you have any questions so far? We good? All right. One of the other things I wanted to um, share with you is some of the um, basic techniques that we do that um, use in a non-standard way. And normally by the time Christmas time comes, if we were in class at the center, particularly Friday class, most time during the season, we're working on Christmas ornaments and other things. And I'm sure some of you that have, um, let me see something for a minute. Some of you that have been at Darnell normally see during the holidays is when I would put up the ornaments. And this is netting. You know that netting that you did, Julia? Yes. Okay, this is using netting in a different way. And it really is kind of like making a skirt for your ornament. 
and covering it. So that's one way. And then this one, I haven't quite finished this yet, but can you see that? What I'm doing with this is, this is an ornament that's already done, but I'm doing a peyote stitch around it, and I'll probably stop it in here. The reason I stop this is because I can't find any more of these colored um, pearls. So I'm probably going to take this last one out starting and add a different color to it if I don't find any more. But I wanted you to see how you can take these same stitches that we do and turn them into something else. Mm -hmm. And of course, when we would do this, now I had... Um, one participant bought the mini um, ornaments, clear ones. And what they did was they did an entire set of Christmas ornaments, almost like the 12 days of Christmas, you know, each one was a different whatever. And it was a great gift. I mean, it's a personalized gift. Mm. So it's something to think about. So what I want to do is show you this and just to give you an idea, but this is just simple weaving again, because you are always looking at the weaving concept of I'm making a piece of jewelry, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but you need to look at it differently. So along those lines, and I love these stands and I have them in different heights and we would, you know, you can set them up, but it's a great gift. It really is. Yeah. Especially with people who don't decorate a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it, table. <laughs> you can also use these things because we've done them for like Easter. I don't know if you all remember the window we do for Easter. It just depends on what you want to follow as far as your pattern is concerned. So what I did is, and I can't remember if I sent this to you already, Julie. I may have tell and I, I try to remember, but... <laughs> Give me if I don't. So definitely last Friday, because I'm trying to get people together if they are planning on doing holiday things or whatever. But um, I want you to see, this was the pattern that I brought to class last week. You want to see, let's see this? Ooh. Did I send you this, Julia? Ellen? Yeah. Yes, you did. I, I thought I, I tried to remember because when, and this is from Friday's class. Oh, Friday's class, because I was going to say I was on Wednesday's class and I didn't remember seeing that. No, no, okay. I, know I, did, I know I didn't do Wednesday, but what happens is for those Let's people that I know that do a lot of bead work when I distribute patterns on Friday, even though I'm going to bring it back to you guys, I, I try to remember those people that I know do a lot of, a lot of bead work now. I'm going to ask you guys to excuse me for a minute because I need to plug my laptop in. Thank you. Okay. And the reason I love this pattern is, is twofold. Because first of all, this is done as an ornament cover. And if you see, you have these medallions more or less that are done. And then you have how it's, you know, like anchored out here so you can see where the beads are. So if you look at this, so it's kind of like, you know, creating this attachment that holds that piece together to cover your ornament. But the other part of it is this. You see how you make these medallions individually? And then they're connected together to create that part that goes around your ornament. And then the um, pieces itself are connected so that it's fit, it fits around the top of your piece. So in this one, and I'll come back to this, I mean, I did the top of mine so that it, it's a, like a skirt around the ornament and it just covers it. So if I take it off the ornament, you see what it looks like? It's just a skirt. Uh -huh. 
but the center of it is such that it slips right on the top of the globe. So what's neat about this is, and what I really liked, look at this. This can be a bracelet. It can be oh. a, it can, because you're making these individual components. And when I saw this, I really loved it as you know as a, as a standalone jewelry piece. But I went through and read the directions. Directions are really, really easy. Extremely easy. And if you have, and this is the top of the snowflake, which is the top of the ornament that I have here. And see, it's just like uh, spokes going out so that it just attaches so you can bring all of those back in and it becomes your cover. But I thought the individual um, components of it are absolutely gorgeous. And it doesn't have to be. And if you notice that instructions are not very long, because it's just a repeat and repeat, and they just make them and connect them and you know fit around the fattest part of your ornament if you choose to. But I, when I saw the other part of it as a, uh, as a you know, bracelet or whatever, when they all connected, you can do anything with it. And these are used as super duos too. And this is um, one of Deborah's uh, pattern also. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. So tell me what your thoughts are. You're going to be sending that to us? Yes. Oh, cool. cool. That's nice. Well, and I'll send it again just in case. Huh? I oh, okay. All right. Just, just to be sure. But like I said, is that's the neat thing about um, these ornaments. You know, you just dress them up, put, put whatever. And I love doing netting with these simply because, um, I mean, you're just connecting the beads again and making a, a starting out with a piece that fits around it. And then you're just working back and forth. Now, these, the ones that I'm showing you are very simple. But um, I'm trying to remember, there are people that made some very elaborate coverings for the ornament. And it's one of those things where, you know, it's whatever you want to do in whatever direction you want to take as to how you can work this. So all of those techniques that you perfected just thus far will work. And like I said, the easiest thing is always, hey, make a peyote cover or something, you know, to go around the top of your piece. And you're good to go. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what else can I look at, check on, to make certain that we're all in sync? Yes, no. So, in other words, as long as I keep providing patterns, you all are fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm really trying to understand. Keep them coming. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, lastly. I just want to show you this. This is another piece of this book. I, I just forgot this book on Saturday, I think it was. But I don't know if you can see this necklace piece there. Oh. Mm. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. they, the thing that's unique about this is the bead shapes that I have, I didn't realize that there's so many new bead that's shapes. A lot of new I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that. And um, 
that's one of the things that I'm really excited about in looking at this. So what I plan to do is scrutinize and figure it out, figure out and order at least four or five new bead shapes um, so that I can, you know, work some of the things that are in here um, just, be, just because, but I do like that. I did start working on I'm trying to remember the pattern. I have to show it to you. And I made the decision that I'm not going to complete it because what I found the components is was it Isabel? It was one of the patterns that I gave you guys a while ago. But the centerpiece of it is so small that I don't like it. So I decided last night. I'll probably turn in, turn it into earrings, what I have, but it is not, you know, like bold enough for me. <laughs> Just too small. Too dainty, huh? Yes. And I mean, I, I'd like to have something got more whatever to it. But anyway, I'll have to show you that. So that's all that I have for today's session. As always, I'm sad that you all are so quiet. I hope that uh, you are learning something. We are. Yeah. Well, definitely learning how to be quiet is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're just glad to be in the class. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're glad to have a class to, to turn on to. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I say keep keep it coming. Linda, uh, what can I provide to you to kind of assist you? I know you did your earrings. And, yeah, um, I did it. I have forgotten to send in, though. <laughs> okay. I did one more, but I forgot to send in. To me? Huh? Are you are going to send the new thing to me? Yeah. Okay. I will send it to you, yes. I just okay. forgot it because I was so angry in your class that I, I forgotten to do it. <laughs> All right. No problem. I just want to make certain that I'm keeping you engaged in what's going on. I don't want to... No, open. enjoy your class. Don't worry. I love it. Oh, okay. And therefore, the participants there too. Okay. I don't want to overlook anybody. I want us all to be working. So if you come across anything else or any questions or anything that I can investigate while I'm still researching these patterns, just let me know. And I will get um, this uh, document out to you today as soon as we finish. Um, within a half an hour, I'll get this current pattern out. So those of us that like to just jump on it, they go ahead and get started. But mm -hmm. Who are you, you talking to? I'm just talking in general. Uh -huh. And it does not mean that you have to work that pattern. You know, you I, I'm just pointing out that techniques that you're already familiar with, how you can take those techniques and turn them into covers for ornaments. And um, I have been working in my garage and I have a, a plastic bin outside and it's full of ornaments. And it's really too bad we're not close to each other. And what happened is I would purchase them like when Christmas time was over, you know, they'd be like 50% off. Yeah. I have boxes of them in different sizes and everything. But um, whatever you choose to do, just keep on working at it. Stay busy. Stay balanced. And that's where I am. So unless there are some other parting words for us to remember. And the key thing that I'm doing today is remembering miss me with that. I love it. <laughs> I like that. Too. Yeah, me too. Well, one thing I always say about Bishop Brown, which is why I always enjoy his sermons, there is always something unique Mm -hmm. When he, he has, at, at some point, some profound statement that he makes, and when, when I would be there, I always felt like he was talking to me, like he knew I was there and needed to hear that. Now, he is definitely on target with the word. Yes. For sure. For sure. So on that note, I hope you guys have a wonderful remainder of the week. And truly stay balanced as much as you can. Reach out if you need assistance with something. I'm here. I'll get your patterns out to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon. You too. Thank you. you. Thank you. you too. Take Bye. care. And okay. last Thank question, you. everybody's voted, right? Yes, I have. All right. I have, we all I good. Voted. Thank you. Excellent.
Okay, Ella, bye -bye. Don't, I get to send okay. you that information, Ella. No, I won't. Okay, Gwen, yours too.